This is Jeff Katz, and it's Wednesday, August 12th, 2009, and it's approximately 1.45 or 2 o'clock, and I'm here with Alf Collins in his apartment in Madison Park. So we're going to have you look at Jeff and not the camera. Okay, perfect. Um, the only time I will interrupt is if mm. a plane goes oh, yeah, or something's yeah. just really loud, and I'll just okay. put my arm up. Okay. Signal. And everyone stops. Uh, yeah. Okay. And that means everyone stop because something's yeah. really loud. <laughs> yeah. Um, but other than that, we are ready. Hit it. Okay. Um, I just wanted to uh, start off with some general questions mm. yeah. just to get a little bit of background information, and then um, we'll start talking about um, your your years with Allied Arts and mm -hmm. also uh, the other <laughs> many things that you did, yeah. including your work with the Seattle Times Okay. Um, and uh, your life uh, with Sir La Table, yeah. etc. Um, so first of all, um, could you just tell us uh, where you were born and um, if you don't mind sharing it? Yeah. Hang on. Yeah. Just, oh, yeah. I just wanted to finish. Yeah, let, yeah, yeah, yeah. I figured during that your talking mm. part it was fun. Yeah. But it's almost out of the driveway. Yeah. And if there's anything that Yeah. Just say if this if it's if it, you feel yeah. like it's not no, something it's, you want to talk about. It's okay. <laughs> I spoke to uh, Ray Tufts the other day. Oh good. She was saying that, um, you know Well that's an it, that's it, about three interviews and a half. <laughs> <laughs> but she was saying, she was saying, no, I don't think it's anybody's business when I was born. No, oh. oh. <laughs> so, that's true. So, if, you, if you feel it's inappropriate, that's fine. Okay, it's gone. Hit it. <laughs> so I'm just wondering if you could first of all tell yep. us um, where you were born and um, what was your date of birth. Okay, I was born in Berkeley, California. Actually, I, the hospital was in Oakland, but it's just that far from Berkeley. Uh, it's across the street from Berkeley, so. Um, uh, November 28, um, 1936, which puts me into 72, and that's where I am now. And um, would, would you mind telling us a little bit about um, your family, uh, you know, your parents? Siblings? Sure, yeah. sure. Um, I have two siblings. Uh, my sister lives up in Missoula and retired from Albertsons where she set up um, uh, the deli sections of new stores. And um, she's very happy being in, in um, Montana. My brother is six years older than I and he is a Christian brother. He taught at St. Mary's for a very long time and is now in their retire in the brother's retirement community. And he does a lot of um, mentoring of, of kids um, going through St. Mary's. Uh, my father was, is in the um, St. Mary's College Hall of Athletic fame. He was a, a lineman in the, in the good old Madison, uh, Madigan days, where they used to go down to um, to Lane and then to up to Fordham and then uh, eventually they uh, went to Hawaii to play and it was the first college team football team that actually did you know did all of that traveled that widely and he um, spent uh, all of his um, um, business you know uh, professional career as a um, director of the Alameda County Camp for Juvenile Delinquents. And uh, it had, for a long time, one of the lowest recidivism rates in the, uh, in the United States. Uh, my mother was a, a, a teacher and she stayed home and, and made sure that we were neurotic. <laughs> Was she successful? Oh, very. <laughs> um, I came up here in 1967. I, I worked for uh, papers in uh, Fremont. Oh, I started at the Oakland Tribune and um, uh, worked for uh, the Fremont News Register when it went uh, daily. 
and then down to the Turlock Daily Journal in Turlock, which was a fascinating thing, and I won't I won't burden you with any of those those funny tales. But where is Turlock? in the uh, between Modesto and Merced in the San Joaquin Valley. See, so, uh, it, it's a very yeah. It's a well, so it's a wonderful community because it's it's split almost equally between um, Seventh Day Adventists, uh, Swedish uh, evangelists, um, hmm, Armenian um, uh, Orthodox, and what else? There's one other group, and they. They have sort of you know, had at that point sort of divided the community so that everyone knew you know who could run for the city council, and then um, Stanislaw State Community College or uh, uh, State College came in and just took the whole thing and turned it upside down because it was a state college and they you know uh, university campus and so they made this wonderful trade off that the um, the city could have, you know, its, you know, its rotation, but the school, the, but the um, uh, university faculty could have the school board, <laughs> and it was, it was true. It wasn't inviolable, but that was the agreement, and everyone stuck to it. It was a wonderful community to be in and to report. And then I, for a, a while, I went up to the Modesto B and and handled their um, uh, uh, um, community uh, commissioners, um, reported on them, didn't handle them. <laughs> and uh, then, at one point, I'd come up to visit my sister, and I looked around and I put in my application at, at both papers as as was required by anybody with any ambition. And a year later, the Seattle Times called and said, well, we're uh, starting a real estate section and we really need somebody with, you know, with some experience. You know, would you come up? And of course, I hopped it right in my car and came up. And I've been here since 1967. So um, you, your sister was living up here? No, my sister was living in, um... no, I'm sorry, she was. She was living on Bainbridge. And she eventually went off, you know, um, my, my brother-in-law really got distressed because Bainbridge was so overcrowded. So they went off to a, a ridge above um, oh, the, the state college in, in Montana. I can't remember the, the name, but anyhow, they, they were sufficiently out of town that no one bothered them. <laughs> where, where did you... Um Get your get your journalist training, or where did you go oh, to school? Um, well, I I went to uh, I graduated from St. Mary's College, and um, I went uh, I did um, a few courses towards an educational uh, year did you certificate. Oh, 58. Okay. And I I got almost the the way to uh, I went to. Um, what was then Hayward State College and is now, I think, what is it, South Alameda County State, whatever it was, um, and there was a um, assistant city editor from the Times that came down and 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 uh, taught the uh, the journalism program there, and he says, well, I, I had been working part-time, Have, having acquired two children at, at that point, uh, I, um, I was working uh, nights at the uh, juvenile hall, um, you know, uh, and he said, well, you know, you might just as well come up and, uh, to the Tribune and, you know, and, and handle the, uh, the night news stuff, so I handled all of their uh, uh, local reporters. Um, Stuff and, and you know measured <laughs> measured the holes in the in the paper and put you know that much in. Uh, it was not uh, it was not uh, journalism as it as it as it is or was, but I did it. And um, then the Fremont News Register went uh, daily, which was very interesting because it was for 
four towns in, in that had composed Freedom. Fremont incorporated to stop Hayward from annex, annexing south and Milpitas from annexing north. So there was 98 square miles and a population of, I think, mm, it was not more than 30,000 people. 98 square miles, but anyhow, the, the Fremont News Register was, you know, was there and, and was ready to expand into a daily, so it did, and um, we were all, you know, we were all sort of inventing the uh, the form as it went along. So, so you, um, you you came up here and you got the job with yeah. the Seattle Times. Yes. And. Um, and tell me again, the first, the first, it was it was working in which section? Oh, the, the, it was when the real the Sunday real estate section yes, was yes. created, and they I, they brought me up to write for that. And that was sixty seven. Yeah. Okay. So, you you came up here mm -hmm. and in nineteen sixty seven, and um, how did how did you become uh, connected with Allied Arts at that point, or how did and what? Well. Uh, mm -hmm. This was the time of, of uh, Save the Market, and this was, you know, and Allied Arts was a big part of Save the Market. Mm -hmm. And also, um, I uh, met my wife, Shirley, who was the executive secretary of the AIA, AIA chapter. And so, of course, I had plenty of guidance as to what to do, but also Peggy Goldberg was her best friend for you know years and years and years and Piggy Goldberg has this wonderful still has this wonderful circle of of um, of the uh, those that are still stirring in the uh, in the allied arts uh, um, not not so much in the um, office you know in the, the program you know a, as in the uh, the tunnel but um, all the mostly the foundation now. There's there's a far greater gap between the AIA or the uh, Allied Arts and the um, Allied Arts Foundation, which still I think has something you know um, between two hundred and three hundred thousand dollars of of principal, and. Um, Still does, you know. Still does uh, a, a, um, a yearly um, uh, awards program, and still has quite a few um, regional and even national uh, the groups uh, that operate through the Allied Arts Foundation. It's one of the, it's one of the, the little the little known um, uh, monsters of of uh, art support. So, so how did how did you and Shirley actually meet? Um. Over over friends of the market. Now I uh, Shirley's going to be very upset when I tell this, but it's 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 true. Um, when I first got. To the Times, and I was looking around at you know what what needed to be done to report real estate. You know, architects seemed to be a, a, a pretty good thing, so um, I called um, Shirley and said, "Hi, I'm the you know I'm the new reporter in town. What what can I do?" And we we hit it off over the phone, and for two months, I called her every morning, and I read her the PI. Because she had to be, you know, she had to be, you know, on the ground and, and running by the time she got to her office. <laughs> and we didn't meet for a third year. And I went to there was one terrible schism in, in the um, uh, the market uh, movement when Victor Steinbrook went off to England on a, a sabbatical, and. Another group rose up within and challenged his leadership, and Victor flew back. and And I was covering. I was. Uh, I was more covering this, you know, as a news story than I was support one way or the other. But I walked into this meeting at the um, market, and <laughs> I was looking around, and there was this. You know, young lady sitting up on a uh, on a pedestal uh, because it was um, 
it, it was a second-hand shop uh, slash coffee shop, and um, she, you know, she summoned me over, and I finally met Shirley, you know, Shirley uh, Turner is at that, and uh, it didn't take but two years to uh, to change that around. Do you know what year that? Uh, do you remember what year that was when, when the schism? Oh, um, oh, sixty. Well, it was almost. Well, it was either sixty-seven or sixty-eight, and um, there was a lawyer. Uh, mm, whose name I cannot, I cannot bring forth, but he led a, a thing to, you know, to um, just, I, I think they just sort of wanted to link, you know, to communicate with the other side, and Victor was not into communicating with other sides. <laughs> and he flew back from England, in, you, know, uh, t you know, for this, for this meeting, and it was, um, I, yeah, I, it, it, Certainly reinforced the uh, uh, the whole save the market uh, thing. Everybody, everybody felt better that that was over. <laughs> do you do you remember what the uh, what the, um, the the difficulty was? What what the other side was? was I think they wanted to compromise with the uh, with the downtown the bankers. The bank, the bankers were the other, you know, en banc, uh, as it were, uh, opposition, uh, civic opposition to the uh, friends of the market. And the AIA never quite could determine whether it wanted to go one way or the other. So, it, it, were you? At, did you become involved at that point? No, I couldn't because I was, I was writing it. <laughs> Well, I was, you know, obviously involved in it because I was there, but I was still, you know, writing it, and journalism has its standards. So, so um, at that point, were you primarily looking at the architectural uh, news of, of Seattle? It was, it was more, it was far more civic than it was either design or uh, professional. It was, it was, you know, either you know, either you love the market or you know, or you don't. It wasn't. It there was no middle at that point. You either voted for the uh, historic district or you didn't. And most of the banks and most of City Hall um, uh, were not in favor of it all because it it you know it called for keeping. The existing building that, as you come in, and there's De Laurentiis um, and that that wing, but everything else would be cut out and put into high rises, and it was not uh, it was not a, a, a happy thought. It, as Victor said, it's like it's like finding your grandmother's teeth. <laughs> A, a very, a very yeah, yeah, that's right. A very yeah. Saving your grandmother's teeth. So anyhow. When when um, did did you actually begin your your involvement with Allied Arts? I know that you were on oh. the board of trustees for a number of years. Yes. When did you actually start? I oh well I was a I went on board as a um, as a. a you know, a, a desk sitter um, in just before the I was I was in you know in in the chair uh, when they did the um, uh, the the ball at the museum the you know the 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 bomb. And we auctioned. You know, the, my first function was to auction off that bomb at a at a gala party. So that was probably around '93. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, yeah, I no, like yeah, I retired from the Times in '87. Okay. okay. And I uh, had nothing nothing uh, to do with uh, with all that stuff. So I, you know, I hired on. And I'm sorry, I can't remember who. Had just left the uh, chair, um, and 
I was there until um, Brina Gustafsson took it in <laughs> five years before she opened her store at the market. It's probably yeah. around like 90, yeah. 95. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was, I was there for four or five years, I think. Do you, uh, in, the, in the years that, I, I know that you mm. were, um, on the board of trustees mm. for, for mm. about five or so years, yeah. from the late 70s to the early 80s. Yeah. Um, do you recall some of the activities that you were involved with uh, as a member of the board or what Allied Arts was doing at that point? Um, at late 70s, oh, yes. Early well, the, you know, the, the, the spine of Allied Arts at that time was the um, annual arts auction and the Art, artistic community was very, very, very generous in in supplying um, art to be auctioned, and we made uh, enough you know enough to cover our annual costs at the um, auction, and and a lot of you know a lot of it went was devoted to uh, uh, getting that lined up and and make you know making sure that everyone got credit and. Uh, that it was it was um, a, a fairly fairly widespread hand holding operation and it would work just fine. We always we always had a good reputation in the arts community, despite the fact we were <laughs> begging, and uh, they always had a um, they always got a, a really good. We I think we were the first arts auction to give back a certain percentage of the fee, um, uh, the sales price. To the artist, I think um, there were, by that time there were several other arts um, auctions in town. But I think we were the first to give back percentages of the sale price to the artist. Speaking of percentages, I know that that was the time when the percent for uh, for arts ordinances were um, were also kind of. Uh, being oh yes, and Allied Arts was was of course um, well, and that was um, a lot. Um, probably, there there were obviously a lot of other people involved, but I think Jerry Thone and um, Lou Pritchard uh, really moved the levers to get that legislation done. And. Uh, and, and it was uh, it was pretty it was pretty monumental um, at, at that point it seemed. Well, it you know it, it sort of you know it, it sort of normalized itself very quickly and and became part of everybody's life very quickly and of course there was there was no opposition to it it was it was easy legislation to uh, to enforce <laughs> and it just worked. And you know, and I think I think both the city and the county were um, were very pleased that it had come up. It's it, virtually the same thing happened very early on when Allied Arts um, got the uh, sales tax removed from um, uh, arts events tickets, and that was that was a, a big shot in the arm f at that time for um, uh, performance art. And that was at that time was also uh, the the time of the survival series, I believe. Yes, yeah. which was which is a very interestingly. There's no documentation left on the on the survival series. It was well before I had anything really to um, to do with it. It was, and I think, yeah, you know, was I think probably Peggy Goldberg and her um, her group. Um, were the ones that did that. Peggy, Peggy has the um, the press, <laughs> and she printed and printed and printed um, uh, material about you know about uh, uh, Allied Arts events and, and things. She did. She was the printer for all Allied Arts events, and she has a wonderful sense of humor still. She's um, a, what? She's 86 now, <laughs> but she is still very sharp, and her memory is very good. Plus, 
She has the last remaining three file cabinets of Allied Arts records that, that the uh, UW library hasn't gotten. <laughs> And they're, they're at her house because when we closed the office, that was, you know, and they, were, they had to go somewhere. It's, we're we're going to be seeing Peggy next week. Oh, good. We'll make sure that we, we take a look at that. Oh, you know, talk about the survival series a lot because she, she still has a lot of uh, very clear memories of that. Did, did you cover that at all for the, uh, for the paper? No. I was, I was, you know, I was still a real estate writer. But uh, but it was you know we we stretched it into uh, urban values and things like that. It's interesting. I I, I was looking through some of the records yeah. and I found um, some information about uh, a 1975 uh, program that Allied Arts had, which was called um, let me just see, um, Pay Now Don't Go Later. Yeah. And, and uh, you were given credit for coming up with that idea. Yeah. <laughs> And coming up with some of the the, the special gifts that uh, that yeah. you did for, um, do, do you remember that? At all? Oh yeah, it was. Could you it talk was, a little bit about? Well, it was just a, it was a community group, and and you know all the all the wise guys were there, and and I just you know I just said well you know, you don't you know, if if you didn't have to go to a, an event, you'd pay a lot of money not to. And that was basically it. And that was after, that was very shortly after Alice Rooney had, Alice Rooney still may have been um, a director. Um, and she had, of course, the pay the rent parties. And the pay the rent parties were very, it was Friday afternoons and anybody could come. And, you know, and they had bad wine and, and um, even, you know, even worse coffee. But every, there would be, there'd be, oh, 80, 90, 100 people come, come to the office, which was not very big. And that was in Pioneer Square? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was so, you know, Grant and, and Ilsa Jones um, owned own that space in the building. As well as their offices, and they just lent it to, uh, you know, gave it to Allied Arts for, oh, I think at least 20 years, and that was that's one of the great generosities that you know, is never really talked about with, um, and I think largely because they didn't really want it talked about, <laughs> you know, they were giving away that space. And, you know, but they, they, they did really want us to be happy enough so that we would go away when they needed it. <laughs> but um, that's, that's, one of the, that, that's one of the unheralded uh, uh, advantages of Allied Arts, that they had the free office space. And, and so the, the pay, the pay, uh, um, the pay oh. now, don't go later, yeah. that was a fundraising. Event. Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. I, I, I just thought it was really funny, that, yeah. um, and, and I, I thought maybe that you had come up with, with, oh. with these particular ones, but oh. one of the things you could bid on was a talk and slideshow by David Eisenhower, yeah. his recent appendectomy, yeah. and, and, that, and Julie would be serving refreshments, yeah. um, and that was $10 yeah. if, you, if, you didn't, yeah. if you didn't want to get Yeah, right. <laughs> And uh, there was a. There, I know, the Republicans really suffered when Allied Arts had a, a list of things. This was actually, I just wanted to show you, this was one of the flyers that came out, and you can take a look at this. Oh, well, good. You might, this might bring back a, a couple of memories, but this is, um, this was one of the flyers that was produced. Hey, well, this is, this is Peggy Goldberg's printing. Yeah. Yes, well, you know, you know, obviously no one really got asked if they wanted to be on that list. <laughs> Which list is that? Oh, um, you know, um, an appointment to have your hair styled by Wes Ullman's barber, yeah, and, um, you know, a cruise of little-known shoals and reefs in, in Puget Sound with Dewey Soriano, who was, you know, a tugboat captain, or a ferryboat captain, I can't remember which. Um, and, of course, a... a, a at one point, the King Dome had uh, a lot of leakage problems, and this was a rainy day tour of the Dome Stadium by, you know, by John Spellman, who was county administrator at that time. 
a visit a visit to the Steuben Glass showroom when I don't think we had a Steuben Glass showroom with Cub Scout Pack 131. <laughs> it was they were just cute. And uh, Allied Arts was big on cute at that point. It was a great idea. It raised, it raised a, you know, not, not a huge amount of money, but enough to, you know, the, the gigglers sent in their checks. I think it actually, it, it, it seems to have raised a, like a, close to fourteen or $1,500, which is yeah. pretty substantial in 1975. It was then, yes. It's really something. Now, in, in, in terms of uh, the climate in Allied Arts, mm -hmm. um, and You've talked a little bit about, you know, about what, you know, with the excitement and mm -hmm. and um, and spirit. I'm just wondering if you could talk a little bit about what it was like in general um, in Allied Arts in the 70s and in the early 80s, and and mm -hmm. how that might have differed from the the mm -hmm. 90s when you were executive director. Well, there were um, there were certainly more. Uh, there was more um, division. The uh, the visual arts people went their way, and and uh, of course um, the what's the other uh, the arts foundation that uh, uh, has become really the uh, the best of them all. Um, Can't run. It'll come. It'll come back. It's you know, it's the only one in town. Not the Seattle Arts Commission. No, no, no. This is this is a foundation. Artists, Artist Trust. Artist Trust. Artist Trust was formed at that point, and interestingly, it became sort of a divider of uh, into segments of the various um, thrusts of the of the artist community, and um, it took. It took a lot. It took a lot of the specifics out of Allied Arts. Although Allied Arts continued to um, have meetings uh, in terms of um, new legislation, what was what was needed. Um, I think there were four groups, uh, subject groups, and it was basic. But it was basic le legislative rather than um, um, anything else. And of course, the Artist Trust had taken a, a lot of the. The Artist Trust wasn't social. It was it was um, you know business like. It it was you know it was kind of the the business of being an artist. And um, and it is it's it since has bloomed into um, into. Uh, it, um, mm -hmm. Financial uh, going going toward financial support of the arts, uh, where Allied Arts uh, seemed to just float off. <laughs> just everyone everyone had been meeting for a long time. We we had great uh, support from the educational community, uh, uh, particularly the community colleges. So. Um, we seem to we seem to have gotten puddled into into that while um, uh, the artist trust marched grimly forward, being <laughs> being fiscal, <laughs> which was which is okay because you know I don't you know despite the fact that the predominant stream of allied arts throughout the last fifty years has been the uh, legal community and. Um, there's always been support in you know in the legal community you know f uh, for Ava. and and of course the board has been has always had at least five attorneys on it and you know and, and towards the early 90s when when I was at the desk um, it was headed by a, a whole succession of attorneys. Which was okay, you know. You could you could certainly work with attorneys as as a, an executive director, but I I think probably their their view of the community was different than the membership's view of the community. A lot of crossing of crossing of either legs or T's, <laughs> whichever. 
and what was it? And what was it? Um, what was the uh, the makeup in the seventies and the and the eighties? Was it? How, how was that different? It, well, there was that was kind of the established um, artists. Uh, we didn't have a lot of events. We had we had social parties. The annual meeting was always a, a social thing, and usually was at Jerry Thone's house, um, and it lasted for hours. Well, that was when we well, that was when we also um, split up the, uh, the grant money, and announced the uh, the grants, and there was you know there was always. Mm, twenty or twenty-five thousand dollars in play, so it was the, the grants were substantial enough to really get some interest, and most of the people on the board had their own axes to grind, and they would they would protect their you know their uh, programs to the uh, uh, to the end, so it it got to, it got to be a little bit of tension, but it also a lot of um, uh, trade-off, and it was, it was a very pleasant e afternoon to do. I, I, I know that uh, in 1975 you, you did the, um, I believe, the keynote speech for the, for the annual meeting, which, uh, <laughs> which seems to be somewhat, um, somewhat uh, well-known at this point. <laughs> um, and, and, and you talk oh, what did I say? <laughs> <laughs> You talked about, um, I'm looking at the, the newsletter, yeah. where you talked about um, the fact that uh, uh, Allied Arts um, was becoming more consulted than insulted mm -hmm. at this point, and that um, the, the boards that you once yeah. attacked, um, yeah. that you, you now belong to those yeah. boards. And, and how, and you talked a little bit about the Olympic Hotel as well. And oh, well that was, that, was re that really was a, uh, an urban uh, victory for Allied Arts. Because, you know, they wanted to tear down the building across from the Olympic. Um, it was a, a it's a lot. It still is a large office building, and they wanted to tear it out and um, and redo it. And and there was also a lot of um, um, give and take on the uh, historic rooms in the um, Olympic, and all of them got saved. And the Olympic Hotel would look a lot different right now than it, you know, that it than when uh, they started in to uh, do it. It was, you know, it was it was built as a community effort in the 30s, in the really depths of the Depression, and it was built by community contributions. And it, you know, it is truly a you know a, um, a Seattle monument. That's but there was a, there was a whole point, and and the you know um, probably uh, Allied Arts became more important because the uh, Downtown Merchants Association was really kind of fragmented about whether they wanted new or keep the old, <laughs> and uh, the Downtown Association couldn't really raise enough um, uh, spit to. To, uh, to to uh, counter the uh, historic preservation people. It seems like there were um, lots of battles that that were were won. A few that, mm. that weren't won. Yes. Um, and uh, um, do you do you recall any of the any of the battles that that uh, were particularly noteworthy? Uh, well, I'm trying to think of any that were, you know, particularly galling to uh, to to lose. There was there was some opposition to the um, um, mm, mm, mm. our brilliant uh, Japanese architect who um, did the science Pacific Science Center. And he built, or he designed that that building, and it was it was ugly, and it took out a historic. Church. It replaced it with a you know a, a church, but it took out a historic church and um, IBM. Oh, it was the IBM building. That's why you know, that's why everyone you know saluted. <laughs> and it's obviously has since been sold by IBM. 
and and the uh, yeah the bar association officers offices are there and and um, our uh, our current vice president is one of the officers of the bar association uh, one of the uh, hired you know the, the staff officers so it's it's a it's a remar it's a remarkable thing that uh, they have to sit in those offices <laughs> and stew. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, I, I can't remember what was on that on that ground before um, uh, it was torn down for the IBM building, but there was a lot of there was a lot of pushing and shoving over that. It, it's uh, it, it, the, the, there are a couple of buildings that that seem to come up mm -hmm. uh, a lot in terms of, in mm -hmm. terms of things that that didn't quite get saved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I believe uh, th there was uh, the White Henry Stewart building. That's uh, that's the one that one? yeah that's yeah one. across from across from the Olympic across Hotel. Olympic Hotel. Yeah. And it 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 was you know it was kind of a slap together um, uh, thing of three different buildings that had been sort of united um, only in title, and it. Um, it you know it probably wasn't a loss to the community, but it, it did have a lot of you know shop space and and small merchants and things like that, and um, has passed on to uh, I can't remember what the what the name of the uh, Rainier Square. Yeah, it was Rainier Square. Yeah. Yeah, that 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 block is such. I mean, there's so many yeah. beautiful. Uh, yeah, buildings down there. I know it was. Oh. Yeah, and it was. A, it was. It was. The shell was built at the same time, but it was three different buildings. But it, it went. Yeah, it's it's um, and and, and I, I know that in the it, also in the early '90s and in the mid '90s that was the, the time when the, the theaters were uh, mm. were being. Yes, we lost the Paramount. We lost. Um, um, the Blue Mouse. We lost. Yeah, it was. Uh, we went on a. Of course, they were movie theaters, and um, at that point, uh, movies were not as important as they had been. And of course, the you know, um, one was torn down. One one of the major ones was torn down for the Weston Hotel. Uh, one was torn down. Well, the Blue Mouse was a, a fairly small. Movie theater, but it was it was you know it was one of the first in in the downtown. Um, oh, and there was one right in the Olympic um, Hotel court that was torn out. That that really, um, of course, the, the Olympic Hotel was a community project and community finance finance, so there wasn't any kind of um, Real objection to it, except that it was a it was a grand old uh, uh, movie palace. Do you, do you recall the name of the theater? I don't. Uh, it was a Benny Pratica um, theater, and you know, and uh, I, don't know, it's, I I can't remember, but uh, any. Almost anybody who knows, you know, the theaters can tell you. There, there was a, you. You just you talked a little bit before about um, this whole downtown, um, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, redevelopment, and, and the downtown plan was something that was uh, was quite was quite uh, important for Allied Arts mm -hmm. in the in those 80, 1980s uh, oh, years. Oh, oh yes, when we were well, when when they were planning the um, the. Th The you know the the outside square in in downtown at Fourth Avenue and and uh, Pine. Um, there had l quite a bit before that. There had been a, a proposal by uh, Fred Bassetti, uh, uh, you know, with at least sketches of a kind of nice um, retail area with um, sheltered walkways. Um, replacing oh, there was a 
it was a well it was one of the original um, pastry uh, to go uh, restaurants mm -mm -mm -mm. up right at the uh, where the uh, train was the, the um, transit was and that had to go um, it was uh, that open square was, uh, was at the cost of minus a lot of really interesting uh, little and probably not very productive <laughs> uh, business spaces, but it, 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 given that and its, and its uh, dreadful neighbor across the uh, street, which you know, doesn't seem to hold you know, many ten tenants uh, or many tenants that anyone wants to go visit. <laughs> And I suspect, I suspect that um, there was going to be a larger, a larger building there that you know that took advantage of that view corridor down to Lake Union, and it just never happened. It, we got this this little anal um, uh, mall with you know with little shops around little walkways and three levels of them. <laughs> It's sort of like a colon, <laughs> but any, anyhow, it's uh, it's you know it's it's going to live out its time in and and uh, inch by inch suffering, and uh, we will eventually be vindicated. <laughs> now that was that was Fred Bassetti's true, you know he he came up against a lot of downtown um, people, and he spent a lot of his credit. Um, on, on trying, you know, trying to get that undone, and that was on behalf of Allied Arts. There was a there was a lot of opposition to it that he that he was fighting against. No, it was the, I think it was the only available bidder <laughs> that you know that created that you know that very awkward. Uh, solution to uh, uh, as an expansion to downtown, or it, it was going to be, you know, the jewel of downtown. Well, um, walk through and tell me. Probably the the best thing that came of that is that uh, somebody came up with the funding to uh, keep the uh, Mayflower Hotel. Which is uh, one of the better uh, run hotels downtown. Um, the <coughs> one thing that, that uh, would be really nice to hear, um, since you've mentioned so many names, mm. is, uh, I know. just a sense of sense of um, some of the people that you. have Worked with who you particularly enjoyed working with. It would just be really fun to hear that. Oh well, Alice Rooney, of course, is always the first. She was, you know, she was the soul of, um, uh, you know, for ten years. Uh, all of the all of Allied Arts records were under her kitchen table, and <laughs> the move to an office um, was, you know, was just so grand for Alice. She. She has a, a lovely house up on Queen Anne Hill, and um, uh, when we moved down to Pioneer Square, the original office was in the hmm, central building, the uh, Allied Arts office, and then when. Um, Howard Anderson redid the um, two building, the two major buildings in Pioneer Square. He he uh, invited uh, Allied Arts to have an office there, and for a while it was on the third floor over the gallery, and um, and everybody loved that space. Of course, it was a very dignified space, and then uh, when that Became unavailable. The Joneses stepped in and, and moved us into the you know into the, the building where it still is. 
the yeah. It's the Jones Building. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Easily enough. Um, let's see. Where where were we going from there? Oh, some of the people that you. Oh oh. Well. Um, By the way, I should just mention that um, that almost everybody who I've talked to said that one of the people that they most enjoyed working with was you. Oh. <laughs> so. How nice. <laughs> It's because I was a loudmouth, <laughs> I guess. Um, well, the architects, Fred Bassetti, uh, Ibsen Nelson, um, uh, also to, you know, to quite an extent, um, um, <laughs> oh, landscape architect, um, Wonderful, a massive guy with 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 gray beard, um, designed the Gas Works Park. Um, still, you know, still in practice. He was he was very much um, in in with that that whole design. It was it was basically designed because uh, a lot of. Um, Free, you know, free urban design advice came out of Allied Arts, um, and Seattle listened to it about maybe 35 percent. <laughs> but that's all right. We, you know, we'll take the 30 percent we got because it's still, you know, it's still demonstrably uh, worth doing. Um, I think probably Allied Arts um, has credit for at least have kept the uh, ra railroad station. There was a there was a real effort when the kingdom got you know came down on its uppers a little bit to uh, you know to somehow incorporate that into a, a, a fast food place. Hmm. <laughs> well, you know they they just needed you know needed to have people you know go down there and and you know Allied Arts or um, uh, Pioneer Square has never been really. Uh, a, a, a family kind of place, and um, it may finally become one, but it never has, you know, never has had the uh, rapport to do that. Um, I'm trying to think of, you know, of all the um, academics. And of course, you mentioned Piggy. Oh who yes, yeah. <laughs> who you know who really you know really controls uh, uh, really you know um, oh the recently retired um, campus architect at the University of Washington. Um, mm -mm -mm. I'll bring I'll bring his name back up. I saw him just the other day. Um, I can't think of anybody from the uh, commercial um, powers that be that was particularly uh, uh, in favor of Allied Arts or encouraged Allied Arts to you know to participate. It was uh, it was always you know kind of the, the oh um, Byron hmm, an attorney uh, uh, mm, mm, Coney Mary Coney and yeah Mary. Byron Byron was one of the most enjoyable cynical people that you ever wanted to talk to he's he's been practicing in England now for. What thirty years, twenty years, but Mary's still with us. Mary is, has always been a uh, a supporter of, of Allied Arts, um, but Byron was very funny. He was he tried to, he tried to get the um, uh, the the freeway to build uh, sound screens uh, past the houseboats in in, U in Lake Union, and of course it's happening now, <laughs> which is which is really strange. Um, let's see, who was it? There was one really determined 
person who got uh, the um, utility wires off of Rainier Avenue South, or at least at the at the top of it, so you could see Mount Rainier. Um, that wasn't Jerry. It may have been Jerry. Oh. It may have been. Yes, Jerry. Because it was it was one of the really successful things. Um, uh, who was it? One of the uh, directors uh, really founded the street tree planting program. Um, Byron also had a, um, a thing about uh, street trees. And Allied Arts became, you know, Allied Arts just became identified with whoever, you know, <laughs> whoever really had a, an ax to grind. It was, I don't know that we were so anti, we were just uh, available and we would listen. And if we liked it, we would, you know, we, we, we would say so and if not, we'd make fun. It seems like there were, there were so many people who were trying to identify, who were mm. trying to, to mm. define allied arts and yeah. it always seems so complicated to define. Oh no, well, it's not really complicated, it just, you know, the things, the initiatives that took never went away and they just sort of got stacked and stacked and stacked and um, so there would always be, you know, there would always be new things coming in but, you know, those old, uh, those old, everyone was guarding, you know, the progress we'd made. There was, there was a, a lot of watchmanship that uh, never really got remarked on but anything that, anything that would, you know, would have, um, deflected it got reported very quickly and got taken care of and and a lot of that was behind the scenes once again the, the Lou Pritchard Jerry Thone um, the legals the legals uh, made sure that uh, things you know things got done it, it's it seems like uh, the, the whole idea of, of having committees and having mm -hmm. people working on specific projects mm -hmm. Must have must have been enabled allied arts to just spread its, its oh yeah its little arms everywhere yes like cancer <laughs> urban you know urban good cancer I don't know but yes um, you didn't have to look very far to find a some interest from allied arts in almost anything that was proposed when when did do, do you um, mm -hmm. uh, aware of when that actually, did that change at all or, or did that, no. is that still the case at this point? Do you think? No, I think, I think it died when we lost staff. Um, because when, after Brina went, um, when, was, when was that? Uh, 80, so I left the Times in 87, so it would be 89 maybe. 90, uh, she just, uh, there wasn't enough money in the budget and she just left and, and opened the chocolate shop at the market. That's Brina? Yeah, what, what's Gustafsson. Okay, right. and, um, and she's, you know, she's still uh, a wonderful re uh, source of, of um, she's, she remembers far more sharply than I. And she's, you know, she's got a, a wonderful sense of humor to also. Because that was, that was, um, I, well, let's see, I, I was, I was actually the hired gun for a couple of years after 87 into 88, I think. And then Brina took over and I quit and then I came back uh, just to do the uh, foundation. I would come in you know, one day a week and do the, found the, the foundation banking and, and the uh, paperwork. And that went on for four or five years and now Karen Kane does that. And now if you want to talk to a positive person, talk, do an interview with Karen Kane. She is marvelous. She knows every nonprofit that you know that Allied Arts, um, the foundation, uh, sponsors, 
and she's in touch with them, and she, you know, she can give you the whole story of them, and that's that has turned out to be one of the um, one of the great things. And and there's there's always a sentiment mm, somewhere in the Allied Arts Board that the foundation ought to just you know give it up and you know and, and you know um, parcel out the money and and quit. And it never gets done because Karen Kane's fierce. And, and still giving out grants. I mean, you're oh, yeah. still generating um, well, artists. Well, I, you know, I said uh, the last time I came back, um, okay, I'll be, I'll be volunteer, and I'll be here until you can do another grant cycle. And it took three years, I think, to, um, to get another grant cycle. We gave $10,000 in grants um, that year, and I said, fine, here's your checkbook. Here's, here's the filing cabinets, <laughs> and I'm not here anymore. And it, that's, that was my last uh, official function, was to, uh, to hand off the uh, foundation. I need to change tapes here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew I'd, I knew I'd wear out at least one tape. This is a good spot to take a break. Battles, again. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things, one of the things that seems to have uh, taken s more time to mm -hmm. fight and then and then lost wasn't successful. Yeah, yeah. It, was the, it was the whole battle over the music hall, which mm -hmm. takes up almost two boxes of material in, yeah. the, in the yes. archives um, in terms of the legal briefs. Et yeah. yeah, I'm just wondering if you could talk about that a little bit because that was a, a rough one. It was, and it was, you know, it was basically. Um, just the financial uh, um, power of the who's the who are the owners the Kle the Kleist family, um, which is which is um, not a yeah was was not a negotiating kind of thing. It's their property, and they have carefully amassed you know several blocks. And they wanted to. They wanted to master plan it, and that theater wasn't in their master plan, and they weren't going to. You know, they weren't going to give it up. And I can't remember who was the chief Allied Arts, um, thing, but there was one person who um, who fought that battle, and you know, um, and we had one of the one of the nicest things left out of it was a whole series of uh, photographic. Uh, images of the of the um, uh, the theater. It was a Benny Patrika Pratika theater. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful place. It was, and the, there's a there's a whole wonderful photo thing, and and yeah, and the Allied Arts auction sold off several of the of the nice old gargoyles, <laughs> or plaster at least plaster casts from the um, from the building as it was torn down. And this was this was uh, during the it was I was at an auction. Uh, like it was part of the auction or? Oh no! D well, the the theater was you know was just. Uh, fun. I don't, and I don't think there's any major pieces of it left. They really wanted that to disappear. Wasn't it wasn't it declared a, a, a historic? It, yes, landmark? yes, and they broke that. And they put up that silly red brick office building. Uh, uh, on part of the site, it was very painful. And you know, interestingly, the um, one of the things that Allied Arts, I think, probably did best was to save the um, what is now the um, Banana Republic store, which was also a Benny Pratika theater. Was was yes, yeah. and that. And they work very closely with uh, with community um, uh, concern, and they did a, a very nice job. And I assume that it it turns a nice dollar for them. It still looks quite, yes. quite majestic. Yeah. And that was happening. Well, that happened just before um, the um, the Kleist disaster. It's a, it's it's incredible to think that there were so many downtown, um, and there's yeah. so few. Well, that yeah, this was this was the 
the end of a whole lot of migratory trails and there were people looking for 50 cent tickets to, you know, to go to paradise. And um, we certainly provided it down, you know, there were, well, somebody, somebody made a count of them, I can't remember, but it was, it was probably 50 movie theaters, plus, you know, plus all the vaudeville houses. This, Seattle was one of the first um, uh, founding, you know, founded um, vaudeville theater centers. Yeah, it's it's uh, um, great that some of them are saved. And the thing that mm -hmm. the thing that is is also very very uh, noteworthy mm -hmm. about Allied Arts is their uh, interest in buildings that probably nobody else yeah. is interested in, such as uh, firehouses and um, and schools and things like that, which which they mm -hmm. battle to, to preserve. Yeah, and uh, sometimes won, sometimes lost. But yeah, well, it was one of the you know, one of the things the architects could express themselves on outside of any kind of, um, you know, nobody, nobody had uh, design contracts to, uh, to fight over. You just, you know, we're gonna keep the building or you weren't. And the developers usually won, but uh, they were all glorious fights. And probably uh, inspired lots of other organizations to through, throughout the country to do similar things. I, I hope so. They would hope so. Yeah. yeah. That's all right. I was going to say Seattle does get a lot of credit in the literature for um, urban preservation, far more than um, a successful urban development. Although there have been so many great architects that have come from Seattle and, mm -hmm. and that have worked in Seattle. Yeah. yeah. One of one of the one of the things that came up also in, in research was. Um, from 1969, uh, Alice Rooney sent you a letter that um, that asked you if you could do an architectural feature on uh, oh. their, on their offices in the Globe, oh. and, and um, it was it was in advance of the pay the rent party. Yes. But I actually, did you ever did you recall ever doing that? Later? I I didn't I didn't get that done. No. <laughs> but that that was all right. We we got some you know we got some. Uh, mention of the Allied uh, Pay the Rent Party, so it uh, it balanced out. And you also, in 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 that around that same time, did a little feature on a, on um, something that Fred Bassetti and Ibsen Nelson were putting together, um, the, the Architectural League, which was supposed to yeah. be commenting on architecture. Yeah. Too many, you know, not not enough uh, spine in the uh, in the uh, design community. So that never got off. That the I don't think that ever got. It it may still be functioning for all I know, but uh, it hasn't impinged on my life. There was uh, shortly after that, Fred I think wrote an article about some uh, some some ugly buildings that he well buildings that he considered mm -hmm. to be ugly. So yeah. That seemed to be his. On his yeah, that was <laughs> that that was the shot over the bow. I think, and they found there was no bow there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There was a there, there was a, also I guess in, in um, yeah, again shortly after that he, he put together something called the Anti Ugly Squad <laughs> at Allied Arts, which which yeah. also attempted to to have things like yeah. do, Dog of the Dog of the Month and yeah. Turkey of the Year. And yeah, like never didn't didn't quite get there, but it was you know a good a good excuse to drink wine I think. Actually, one of the things you commented um, about the Architectural League was that um, it's somebody had said to you that it seemed like uh, the roster of, of people interested were um, more uh, better people to invite to a party than to, to, to think very deeply. <laughs> so that was kind of a you know, yeah. funny thing to say. And they deserved it. <laughs> well, you actually, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, your, your work with the Times, if that's sure. possible, since you were there for 20, 21 years. 22. 22 yeah. years. I've, I've now been on pension from the Times longer than I worked for them. <laughs> <laughs> well, which is, which is something to be said. Yeah. 
So do you have, I mean, how, how are you feeling these days about, about the situation with newspapers? And, oh, well, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's just dreadful. And, and I'm not unconvinced that it's not going to come back around. Um, I see, you know, I see the, basically it strengthens the local, you know, the, the really local newspapers because you, people still have to advertise. And they can, you know they can't afford Seattle Times, but they can certainly afford the Madison Park, whatever. And um, it, you know they have to they have to. There's no great big full page ad campaigns coming of it, but there's still uh, room for the little mm, two by fours that um, were there. And if the newspapers are smart enough, they can package them. To you know, to give them some effect, and if that's if that's effective, then I you know I think we go back to uh, s step number one and start all over again. I you know I national advertising may be dead, although you have to look at the Seattle Times and uh, because you know because they don't have anything uh, to uh, get in between them, they have. Probably as many full-page color ads as they have ever had. And you know, and I think if you know, if we finally see a resurgence in the uh, in the regional economy, I think you'll probably see the Times get a little bit thicker. <laughs> it doesn't always have to be 16 pages. <laughs> Um, I think you know. I, there's there's still no substitute for what the Seattle Times puts on your doorstep, for you know for that source of news. And I you know I don't even think the online really does it. How you know how many blogs and other or other sources of news do you have to sort through to put together any kind of comprehensive? Or at least a contained view of what's happening, uh, and the Seattle Times has given up a whole lot of staff and doesn't have the the fine grain that it used to. But at least it has a me medium grain, and I think I think um, I think we'll see that uh, that come back, just just because it has to it has to be there. I don't. I'm, of course, I'm not a big um, net fancier, so I don't. I don't prowl the net, and, and uh, I don't follow links. And I'm. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm just a, a fuzzy old man. But um, I think probably uh, there still isn't isn't the uh, the completeness that uh, a newspaper is. Are are you um, contributing at, at this point at all? At no. Time to time? no. No. I, I was. I, it was really, again, very remarkable <laughs> to see the, the breadth uh, of of the areas that you covered. Uh, you mm. were you were had a food column. You yeah. Had a, well, that's one of the joys of working. You know, of writing for a newspaper is that you do not have to go up. You can go sideways, and. Wherever you go, you take all of your news sources with you, and you just sort of add them to the new territory, and and um, uh, take you know take commentary from there, or at least you know or at least take um, consultation with some of your your dependable sources when you know when you're thinking of the community from a different angle. Do you do you recall some of the the, the columns that you that you Created that you, that oh well, there was yeah, there was odd parcels in the in the real estate section, and then there was um, uh, mm, 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 the food section uh, column. There was Saturday was a, what, fresh today. Was fresh that? today. Yeah. There was Saturday's Child. There was um, I can't remember. I think I kept view when I was in the women's section. What was then the women's section and. Yeah. Well, that was that was. I think probably if I if I can claim credit for anything at all, the you know the when the um, the great anti the, the feminist um, movement was on, 
they got rid of all of the coverage of the opera guilds and the, and the children's hospital guilds and all those. And if you think of all of the money that flows into the community that takes care of all of the necessities that otherwise don't have any protection, it's the women's groups. And they just wrote them off. Thank you. You're just, you're, you're not relevant. Well, they were relevant and, and they were important. So I, I traded Sally Jean Mahoney to, she wanted to go into the real estate section and I wanted to go in there and, and I was able to do a column that at least, you know, at least salvaged um, a lot of those connections and helped put things together. And it was, uh, it was probably the best thing I did in the whole, uh, in my whole tenure. And I did Saturday's Child, which was, you know, children waiting to be, you know, handicapped children waiting to be uh, adopted. And, uh, and then City Gritty, of course, which was as close as the Seattle Times ever let itself uh, go towards a gossip column. Saturday's Child, that was... Uh, yeah. that was uh, that that was uh, a pretty um, way ahead of its time kind of column it seemed, and and that that I was it was it's cu I was curious to find out if, what some of the results of that column were. Um, well, it was, it was better than it was better than half adoptions that you know that that you know, that held, and um, a remarkable range of kids. There's there's still. A guy in a wheelchair downtown on the you know on the mean streets that was a Saturday's child and I, I couldn't get him a, I couldn't get him a house he was 15 at the time and he'd been on his own for at least five years and he's still he's still running around downtown a failure uh, you know does he does he does he know who you are oh sure yeah sure I. Every once in a while, I say hello to him because he's you know he's down by the market a lot, and I tend to be down at the market a lot. What kind of response did you get to the to the column? There were, as I remember, there were twelve inquiries to the to the um, agency, but nothing could ever be put together. He was he was not big on that. <laughs> He was not big on giving up the you know the streets and the chair and the and the um, uh, cadging money and things like that. He was he was he was living okay. And and what gave you the idea to 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 to, to do that kind of a column? It had been uh, it had been, it was proposed by. Um, Oh dear. It's a social agent. It's an agency, adoption agency. Um, has offices down in the lower university district. Um, it's C A M A. Casa. It's Casa. And uh, they just, you know, they got in touch with the Times and suggested that, you know, it would, you know, could would somebody be interested in doing that and. Sure, I was. <laughs> Sounded like a good idea to me. So we got we got together and we put it together. No, actually, what? No, um, Kathy Reiner was. She was either the first or the third. I can't remember. <laughs> but um, and she was, you know, she eventually adopted a child from you know from that, having written the columns. <laughs> Times is, you know, Times was. Very uh, accommodating on you know letting you you know letting you do what you know what you could make a case for, and of course I had lots of time to sit around and make cases. <laughs> your, your your interest in food certainly um, um, is shared by by your <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I'm sharing her interest in food because you know basically. After the after the store really got up and and going, anybody nationally that was associated with food would come to the shop and you know and sign in, <laughs> and um, Shirley would tell me and I would I would come down and say you know, you know what what's happening, <laughs> you know, 
why are you here? <laughs> and uh, we, you know, we know a lot. It's, it's funny to see the, uh, the Julia and Julie, uh, Ju Julia and Julie movie because Meryl Streep really does look like uh, her, you know, herself. And it got to be when, whenever Julia did a new book, um, the day of, you know that she was going to be there, there would be a line around the block. And, uh, so she would come to. Yeah. Uh, to oh yeah. Oh to yes. Store. Yeah. And one time we had a a thousand dollar a plate dinner for uh, I think Les Dom the Scoffier. Uh, and Julia, uh, Julia was honored, and there were six chefs came and did it in our kitchen, which was, which uh, really stretched the uh, the uh, kitchen. But we we had 21 chairs at the table. It was. Where were you living at the time? Um, on Broadway East. Oh, on Capitol Hill. Yeah. Oh, okay. There was a there was a something in in. Um, one of the newspaper articles mm. that uh, that talks about um, about Sheila Tadler that mm. said that uh, when Julia Child was was quite mm. ill, she um, she uh, nevertheless mm. made a trip to to yeah. Seattle just so that she could come to uh, to yeah. Shirley and your son yeah. and, yeah. and, uh, and make her appearance. Yeah. So she thought quite highly of <laughs> highly of you guys. Well, she she came through a lot. It was you know it was it was old friends from almost from the beginning. Well, it started because St. Mark's was doing a cooking series, and they got Julia, and they had it all signed up with the Bon Marche, except the Bon Marche couldn't provide all of the equipment needed, so <laughs> they had to come to Sir La Table to get the equipment that Julia needed. So Julia got involved and. And you know, and she just you know, she just felt very comfortable. Um, the only the only real story I can remember is that she had a friend who developed this pair of mm, paddles that you could you could mix uh, pastry with you know flour dough with, or you know, or you could flip vegetables or whatever. And they were called Healy flappers, and Julia, you know, giving you know, giving Shirley the the hard test, saying, um, "Do you have Healy flappers?" <laughs> and Shirley said, "Yeah, they're down there in a box under that table. <laughs> We've had them a while, and you know, and and uh, there they are." And she went and pulled out the box, and there were Healy flappers, and Julia was. On, signed on for you know for ever after. The 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 the, the whole uh, food and cooking craze yeah. in, in, at this point, um, it, it seems to it seems to be uh, have come quite a long way from when you guys actually yeah. started. Well, Shirley, Shirley always said that she started the store because she had to go to San Francisco to get a um, uh, mm, uh, the bag that you squeeze to make um, oh, designs. Icing, yeah, icing yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, you know, it, it. So I, I think we hit some kind of a high note. Um, I think in the Seattle Times, maybe it was the New York Times. There was a thing about the Julie and Julia uh, movie uh, increasing interest in um, in cooking, and it came out of the L.A. Times, and the source was Sur La Table rather than any other cooking you know um, line in the in the whole L.A. basin. It was Sur La Table, and it was it was noted as a you know Seattle-based uh, uh, cooking chain, which is that, that's. Really, to have the LA paper to uh, you know, do that was really uh, uh, significant. Now you, I, you um, took on a, after you left Alan yeah. Arts, you took on a job with with the yeah. Sort of I, I wrote catalog. Well, I wrote the, their catalogs from the beginning, but. Uh, she got to 14 catalogs a year, and she figured she needed somebody uh, full time. <laughs> so we had a national search, and of course I was chosen. 
<laughs> and what was that like? Oh, that's fun. I love catalog writing. Um, I, you know, the two things that I still do, uh, I do some catalog writing just, you know, for friends, but I also write uh, auction catalogs. And I've done, you know, I did the Allied Arts ones, but I also did uh, some for the Arboretum Foundation, and now I'm doing them for events up on the island. And that's that's really a joy because you can be you, know, you can be fairly lighthearted and you don't have to be you know you're not ground down to very specifics and it's uh, you just sort of have to make it all seem like what a wonderful adventure <laughs> you know you you've come here and you've got all this money in your pocket and you're going to have a wonderful adventure and here's here's this one and here's that one <laughs> just pick what you know pick what you uh, enjoy. So, I guess you know. I guess it's skilled writing. Who knows? It's it's sometimes hard to make some yeah. things seem really yeah. really exciting and attractive. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> but, of course. But you just have to you know you just have to decide who's going to be interested in this, and then you write it from their standpoint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go to go to the customer and write back to the item. Now, when when did you guys uh, this, what what made you decide that you you wanted to to move on from solo tablets and, and a cash crunch, of course. <laughs> um, she had just started. Well, she had just finished construction on the first branch, which was down in Berkeley on Fourth Street, and um, uh, she hired a. Um, a a general manager who uh, was really bad. He, uh, after after he took Sir Solotab into the tank, he took three other Seattle operations into a tank. And uh, by by law, we are not allowed to, you know, to mention his name. <laughs> but um, you know, sooner or later, it will become obvious. Um, so uh, through a a lot of help and a very good attorney. We, you know, we bailed out to the point where it was saleable, and and um, um, the bankies, um, the bankies bought it, and they were very good about because Shirley, um, Shirley was knew a lot of the bankies very well, so. Um, they were very generous, and we came out of it very nicely, and they allowed us to keep the real estate. <laughs> and that building is now our retirement. Well, that's, that's very, that's very <laughs> impressive. <laughs> and it's gone on. There are now 77 Sulatobs across the country, and it's one of the you know that and and um, William Sonoma are are one and two in the entire um, segment. That's quite exciting. Yeah, yeah, and they've got some very good people. And headquarters are still in Seattle. They're down in the um, design center. It's it's uh, something. Was it something that that Shirley was? Um, Always interested in, or how did she get interested in, in doing? That? She's always been in in, interested in cooking, and there was just you know there were so many things that they didn't you know weren't weren't available here, and of course that was before catalogs and anything else. So she decided to open a store, and one of the one of the people that deserves a lot of credit is um, okay now uh, Jim. A very nice store down in the re, in the, in the regrade uh, furniture store ex, uh, import store. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Anyhow, he was partners with uh, in Keegs. He was one of he was uh, he was uh, Jim Egbert, and Jim Egbert. 
took her under his wing and took her down to LA and taught her the difference between retail <laughs> and and wholesale and taught her you know taught her the ropes at the LA gift sh show and uh, she never looked back and Jim Egbert's still a good friend and he gave her the, the kind of confidence, the confidence yeah. to do it huh? yeah so that's really something so now I, I, I know that uh, you're involved in, in the Pike Place Market Historical Society. Is that I was. Oh, you were? 16 years on the Historic Commission. Right, Historic Commission. Yeah. And, um, you know, not supposed to, by ordinance, not supposed to serve um, more than two consecutive terms. However, they never could get another property. You know, the, the ordinance requires two property owners, two merchants, two um, people that live there, uh, two from the AIA, two from Friends of the Market, two from, um, what's the other group? Anyhow, but uh, it, they, they never could get to property owners, so they just kept, re kept reappointing me, and I served 16 years. <laughs> and what, what uh, kind of what kind of uh, work was was involved in, in, in all? Oh, it's just you know uh, that's one of the few historic districts in the country that controls both use and design. So not only you know not only do people have to you know have to submit plans for you know how it's going to look they also have to submit their business plans and uh, they can't be you know they have to be mom and pops they cannot be there are no franchises in the market there are no chains in the market except for the chains that started in the market like Starbucks and like Sur La Table and and gone on but um, it it truly is the you know the idea is that um, you walk into a, sh a shop in the market and you say, "What? tell me about this and tell me about that, and they can because they're the ones that bought it. You know? <laughs> and they understand, you know, they understand why they bought it and they can tell you. And that's not a, that's not a downtown experience. It's, it's very, it's unique to the uh, district. And the, uh, the Historic Commission is very, very aware of that and, and very, um, it guards it well. And a lot of, you know, a lot of people get rejected, even, you know, even when the, uh, the uh, PDA brings them forward. It's, it's, it's incredible how many, um, how many, Businesses that have been there for for ages and ages yeah. are still are still functioning and still doing so well. Yeah. And the history of, of places like the Three Girls Bakery. And, yeah. And the, you know the the Athenian. Mm -hmm. Just just in. Well, it's and yeah. And Lowell's, which is where yeah. Of Allied Arts meetings were held. Yes. On the ninth floor, on the third floor. Still, yeah, a lot of the market meetings are still held there. Really. Yeah. Lowell's has always, you know, liked that. Or, you know, or the, the guy who fled uh, Bolivia, be, you know, uh, under um, great um, uh, political stress, who founded the um, uh, Bolivian restaurant and was started out as a coffee drinking um, uh, political philosophy uh, group every Saturday and just went on from there and became the you know, has become the restaurant and he's up there are now uh, you know one floor above and and quite grand what, what, uh, which restaurant is it? it's a Bolivian restaurant it's um, hmm. you know as you as you come down post alley and come out on a pike place there's a triangular restaurant yeah. right above your head that's it he's he's been in the market well he was in the market long before I came up in 67 and uh, still the same family. They came in the other, um, what, two, three years ago to ask 
uh, to get permission to sell pisco sours. Those are actually quite delicious. Right? I know. <laughs> and, yeah. Well, I was. You know, I urged him. To, yeah, I urged him to do it. <laughs> Then why, why would they need permission for that? Because it's a change in the menu. Oh, you're kidding. No, no. This it it gets down to a very fine grain of, of what the you know what the um, commission has to deal with. It's really something. So preservation is preservation. Oh yeah. Well, it's not it's it's not so much preservation. It's um, it's more uh, keep you know keeping specialization. Um, because uh, the last thing you know, the last thing you want to do is to is to um, expand to the point where you drive other potential tenants out. You you know you you you, you tend your last, as they say. Well, um, since we're we're on the subject mm -hmm. of, of now. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, could you talk a little bit about your, your farm up in uh, oh. the <laughs> Well, we have. Um, your new life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Farmer Elf. Because <laughs> it's, it's something that, I, that I'd never done, but we have um, 27 chickens, uh, uh, 17 of which, in theory, are laying, and the others, you know, the, new, the, the rookies are coming on. In theory? Yeah. <laughs> They're well, there they do. Yeah, you know, we get about maybe eight to ten eggs out of the seventeen of them, but that's all right. You know, they they all have life insurance policies. None of them are <laughs> ever going to die at our hands. Uh, we have four sheep, Cory Dales, which have you know wonderful cocoa brown fleece that uh, is much admired for sweaters, and uh, they get you know they get um, shorn once a year, and we have this. Marvelous, a guy who comes over from Wales every April because his in-laws live here, and he said, "Well, he says after about three year, three uh, days, you've pretty well caught up on on where you've been, and you had nothing to do." So he fitted out a, uh, a pickup truck as a as a uh, shavery, and and he has thirty customers on on the island. Pays for his trip, and his wife, of course, stays with her parents. <laughs> and it's authentic Welsh shearing. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, he's his he has a large farm, and he has several B and Bs right under. Mm, what's the highest point on the on the British Isles? Um, it's right on the boundary of England and Wales, and he's on the Wales side of it. But it's, it's at the foot of that at that mountain, um, and we have two miniature donkeys, which are Jerusalem are not uh, are Sardinian asses. However, no one likes to say asses, so. <laughs> So uh, they're miniature donkeys. And they have you know the cross across their withers and down their back, which f supposedly was their reward for carrying Jesus into Jerusalem to be crucified. Um, I'm sure that I'm sure that's not biologically accurate, but it sounds good and explains why they've got that funny marking. And their whole thing is that they protect the sheep from the coyotes. They hate coyotes instinctively.